Hello and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. On this special day of 6 9 2020, I've got some pretty incredible news from one of the very first consumer viable omnidirectional treadmills being announced just this week, to a new full body tracking technique that makes full body implementation into games or other services far easier. That and much more, let's just get right into the news. To start off today, let's talk Apple. It's been a while since I've mentioned the Fruity Company on this channel, but every time I do, it's to update everyone on their slow but sure progress towards the AR and VR industry. Just a few weeks ago, Apple had a pretty massive leak regarding their plans for an XR or AR style device. And around the same time, Apple also purchased NextVR, probably the best company in the world at capturing events that would normally only appear on TV or flat screens, but in VR. NBA games, NFL games, concerts, wrestling matches, you name it. I'm not stretching the boundary here when I say that their services are unmatched by anyone in the industry. If you don't believe me, then pop on your own VR headset and watch one of their short trailers in VR mode. It'll probably change your mind. But moving on, Apple has dozens and dozens of leaks regarding their AR and VR endeavors and here's another big one. And not gonna lie, it sounds pretty crazy. This patent is for a VR headset that instead of using lenses and a display like a typical headset, it uses mirrors, eye tracking, facial tracking, and projectors to scan the images onto a retina. This would allow objects displayed within the viewer to have a far more realistic sense of depth and scale since this method isn't trying to mimic depth using stereopsis like our current headsets and is instead projecting objects pixel for pixel onto the correct depth of your eye. The writer of this article also mentions another acquisition giving some credence to this patent. Quote, they came to Apple, Alexander Spunt that is, after the acquisition of Israel's prime sense that was behind Apple's true depth camera. Being the inventor of this invention, gives it more credibility and likelihood of it coming to market." End quote. Of course, there's no saying that this will ever come to market as it's just a patent. But as always, I'm reporting it here every step of the way. We can talk about Apple's entry into the AR and VR market at a later time because it will be big. But I think it's time to switch gears to our main topic today, a device that is far more likely to actually come to market within the next year. If there is one thing from the movie and book Ready Player One, a story all about a future ruled by virtual reality that I really want in my life, it's an omnidirectional trend. Mill. And it may be happening soon for kind of all of us. Right now, moving in virtual reality is kind of weird. It's a mix of actual body movements and typical Xbox game style movements using a controller. Well, I know when I first got virtual reality in my own home using an Oculus Rift years ago and I got into Robo Recall, I was a little disappointed that a lot of the movement in VR is handled totally and completely by a controller's thumbstick because that's just normal gaming. Yeah, it's efficient and it allows people of all types to play most games, whether you have a small play space or you need to sit down or you get motion sick. There's usually a locomotion method for you, whether it's smooth or teleport. Well, imagine if everything could just be handled by actual body movements. And this is where the omnidirectional treadmill comes in. Of course, I've been watching things like the Infinidec, the true to name actual omnidirectional treadmill, and the slick looking cat VR. The only problem is who is actually going to put a treadmill for VR in their home at this point in time. I mean, I know that I would, but I generally think that I'm the exception, not the rule to the typical VR consumer. Instead, I'm more of a VR enthusiast. I have a room dedicated for VR. Instead of spending money on expensive cars or trips, I save up for better PC components and VR hardware. I like to be on the cutting edge, and if that sounds like you, then this is actually really big news. This is Cat VR's omnidirectional treadmill. It's expensive, sure, it's big as well. I guess it could actually save space if you have an entire room dedicated to VR, but still, it's just not meant for consumers. But this one is, the Catwalk C. It's a more compact model made for the home and to fit into a consumer's house. It offers around 0.69 meters squared of walking space, has a similar harness system as the old Cat VR, and uses specialized footwear that allows you to walk on the surface with a completely natural gait. That includes running as well, like a full sprint. Pretty soon here, VR games are going to have to take into account count how fast a person is actually running, not just limiting a player to a fixed movement speed. And here's the crazy part. CatVR has announced that you can secure one once the backing fund goes live for the early bird price of $699. Now that's still a lot of money. But that is an incredible stride towards making something like an omnidirectional treadmill actually affordable for everyone. This is all cutting edge news from CatVR, so there isn't much other information to give, but the company has already launched multiple other iterations of treadmills 
Amazon and has proven to have a working system on their hands. Cat VR has said that the Walk C will support nearly all existing headsets, including the Rift, Rift S, Quest, Index, Pimax, HTC headsets, even PSVR. Along with that, just about any game that already has smooth or free locomotion already supports Cat VR. I know that I'm excited about it. Having locomotion like this in my house has been a dream since I read and watched Ready Player One, and in the short term, I could see something like this taking off, but we'll just have to see. Of course, like always, I'll be keeping you up to date with all the information regarding the Catwalk C here on this channel every Tuesday. Hopefully getting one in my hands as well to share that experience with you guys. But now it's time for a meme break. So you guys know about the mic issues on the Rift S. It'll just randomly go robot for no particular reason. It's loud, people mute you, and you just get blocked in VR chat. Then you'll be stuck as a nuisance user for the rest of your life in VR. Well, when I made a video on fixing the mic problems on the Rift S, I never quite thought of this. Want your mic to have a studio quality sound? Just tape an actual studio quality XLR mic to your full headset. I mean, what could go wrong? Yeah, you might lose some tracking quality due to occlusion, and you might add an extra three pounds on the front of the headset. But hey, Quest owners have been dealing with that for a year now. You'll live. <laughs> and now, back to the news. So I love full body tracking as I've stated many, many times. I think being able to see your entire body move and interact with a virtual world really pushes VR games to the next level of immersion. Right now, however, if you get full body tracking, it only works in like four games, and most of those are social applications, not actual games, like VRChat and Neos, for example. Manus, however, is a company building software kits for companies to be able to easily integrate really good looking full body tracking into almost anything or any game. They do this by having advanced IK systems that work with full body vibe trackers that you can transplant into whatever application it may be used for. A bad IK is the reason why Linus was having so many issues with live and full body tracking in his video doing that, versus something like VRChat that actually has pretty decent full body IK systems, at least relatively. Hopefully something like this that has both Unity and Unreal engine support can bring more full body VR applications to life so I can get more use out of my Vive trackers than just Blade and Sorcery and VR chat. But there's something else from this company as well, fully tracked gloves, including haptic gloves that are being developed by Manus. But to be fair, hand tracking gloves have already been established as a thing from other companies like Sensory X and they've been proven to work well. These offerings from Manus are really just to have a full system that works well with our software and it's by no means a consumer system. I mean, the Prime 2 haptic gloves come up to 5,000 in Euro. That's just the gloves and the license. Compare that to something like Sensory X, that's $650. And you can easily see that this isn't meant to be in or on consumers' hands anytime soon. That isn't stopping Manus's clients though. Their current list of companies using their software and hardware range from BMW to NASA, Disney, Netflix, and more. So good on them for making a solid industry-supported haptic glove and full-body motion capture rig. Even with $5,000 gloves and a VR headset set up with full-body tracking, it's far cheaper for companies to do something like this than use the motion capture rigs of the past. So even though we may not see the technology of a high quality IK and full body tracking coming widespread to our applications at this time, at least not from Manus, the commercial side is using VR to its fullest capability and I can't complain. Now onto some gaming news. It seems that we're finally starting to get PlayStation VR exclusives coming to PC VR as a platform. For years now, it's pretty much been the case that if a game is released as a PSVR exclusive, it's never coming to any other platform. Form. And it's really led to a gigantic separation between VR users. PSVR users can't experience a lot of PC games because of hardware requirements, and PC users can't enjoy a lot of PSVR games because of, well, Sony. However, a few games have been changing that trend recently, and one of them is Paper Beast by Pixel Reef. A great summary of what this game is all about is in this Road to VR article. Quote, Paper Beast isn't a game in the traditional sense, but rather an immersive interactive story told by the physics-based environment. Surreal creatures lumber around and go around their org lives as you see the world unfold before you, presented in both story mode and sandbox mode for infinite exploration." End quote. The PC version will receive some updates and upgrades like graphics and smooth locomotion, more items in game, and an expanded sandbox mode. This is one pretty zen looking game that I'm looking forward to finally hitting Steam for sure. And now it's time for question of the week. From ComicBugX5, when will you do a face reveal? NEVER! And uh, I'll just add one more in here from Played by Him XXL. If I could magically change one thing about the VR industry at a push of a button, 
what would it be? And that would probably be to stop this hardware exclusivity thing. I wish that all PC VR games worked on all headsets no matter what, natively. I also wish that more Oculus exclusives were sold on Steam. So many good games are receiving half the sales that they should because of store lockdown. I bet that Echo Combat and Echo Arena would beat the crap out of Pavlov in terms of concurrent players if it were on all platforms. So many people would be able to experience some of my favorite games like Journey of the Gods or Stormland. Look, I understand why exclusives are a thing right now, and that is one conversation that we'll have at another time because it's deep and it actually has a place here. But geez, would it be easier for the players if things weren't so split and fragmented? Well, make sure to add your own question of the week in the comments below. I may just answer yours next. And that's the week's news. I will be streaming today on Twitch after this video, so stop on by and also join up in my Discord for some good times. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Very Evil Shadow, Julian, Jake, Benji, Studio Form VR, Yumi, and Zenf. I literally couldn't be doing any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.